Why is zero by zero indeterminate? Or I think more importantly, I want to know what is the meaning of this statement? What do we mean that when you take zero and divide by zero, you get an indeterminate form? Now, I usually like to make physics videos. I like to think in terms of physics. And so and I want to give you a physical intuition behind this thing. So I'm not going to play with numbers, but instead I'm going to give you, try and make a sense of this. So that by the end of the video, you'll understand what what exactly this thing even means. All right, so let's start with some simple questions. I have three questions for us. What is one divided by zero? What is one divided by infinity? And once we answer that, we can ask ourselves, what is zero divided by zero? So these are the three questions that we want to answer in this video logically. To understand this, I'm going to introduce a new vocabulary. This is going to be our vocabulary. Every time I say the word zero, I want you to think of it as a relatively small number. Every time I say the word infinity, I want you to imagine a relatively large number. Now you can see the key word over here is relatively. What do we mean by this relatively? Well, here in the first question, we are dividing one by zero. So zero represents a number which is much smaller than one. Similarly, over here, we have one divided by infinity. So think of infinity as a number much bigger than one. So whatever finite number we use to divide by zero or to divide by infinity, that number is going to be our reference. And with respect to that, I want you to imagine them to be either relatively small are relatively large so now we can understand intuitively what is 1 divided by 0 well 1 divided by 0 is the same as saying 1 divided by a number much smaller than 1 well how much smaller you can take any any number which is very small you can go how much over smaller you want let's go very small and very simple let's do 10 to the minus 10 what do we get well we get 10 to the plus 10 and now look at this number. What we find is this number is way bigger than one. Or in other words, it is a relatively large number, infinity. And that's why we often say one divided by zero tends to become infinity. So hopefully now you understand what is the meaning of this. It just tells you that if you take one and divide by a relatively small number, it's saying it doesn't matter what small number you take, you take any number and as far as it's much smaller than one, so it's a number much smaller than one, it tells you that you're going to get a number which is much larger than one. Again, it's telling you don't know what that number is, but it's going to be a number much larger than one. All right, now let's go to the second part of the question. This was question number one. Now let's answer question two. The question two is what happens if you have one divided by infinity? I think you will be able to understand this all by yourself because now we have to divide one by a relatively large number, a number which you have to choose, which is much bigger than one. As long as it's much bigger than one, it can be any number. So let's say 10 to the 20. Again, to keep things simple, we know the answer is 10 to the minus 20. And notice this, look, look at this number. This number is much smaller than one. Ooh. This tells us that one over infinity must be tending to become zero. And that's what this means. I hope you now understand what is the meaning of this equation. It just tells you that if you take a number one and you divide by a number which is much larger than one, again, it doesn't matter exactly what number it is. You don't have to be specific. As long as it's a number much larger than one, we will end up with an answer which is much smaller than one again. We don't know exactly what that number is, but we can say that it's going to be much smaller than one. So far, so good. Now, let's look at question number three. What is zero divided by zero? Well, according to our vocabulary, since zero is a relatively small number, we don't have a reference over here. We had reference in the numerator for the first two cases. We don't have a reference, but that's okay. We can write our own reference. It, the reference number doesn't have to be the part of the equation. So you know what we will do? We'll write one as a reference as a side. So this is a reference. Now, the question is, what happens if you take a relatively small number with respect to one and divide by another relatively small number 
divided by one and let me write this down because this is important the question now is can we get a generic answer like how we got an answer over here an answer over here can we get a generic answer can we can I, what can we say about the answer with respect to with reference to one is it going to be much bigger than one much smaller than one or is it the same order as one what's it going to be well let's take some examples Let's choose the numerator as 10 to the minus 20. We can do that because 10 to the minus 20 is much smaller than 1. And let's divide by 10 to the minus 20 because even that is much smaller than 1. And notice this answer is just 1. So what does that tell us? Well, this tells us in this example, 0 by 0 is a number which is exactly equal to 1. But wait, that's not the only answer I can get now. I can take another set of numbers of small numbers I can choose 2 times 10 to the minus 20 because that's much smaller than 1 and I can divide that by 10 to the minus 20 and this time I get the answer as 2 well, what is that answer well that's not exactly equal to 1 but it's it's not much bigger or much smaller it's comparable to 1 so this is comparable to 1 I think you now understand where we are going with this I can take another example where I will take the numerator to be 10 to the minus 20 because that's much smaller than 1 and I can divide it by 10 to the minus 10 because even this number is much smaller than 1 and that gives us 10 to the minus 10 and now you notice that we are getting a number which is much smaller than 1 and finally just for the sake of completeness I will take one last equation which is I'm going to take in the numerator 10 to the minus 20 but I'm going to divide that by 10 to the minus 40. And that's going to give us 10 to the plus 20. And notice that compared to 1, that's much bigger than 1. You see the problem with 0 by 0? Or you see the problem by problem in asking what is the ratio of two relatively small numbers? You see, if you ask me what is the ratio of a number and a relatively small number compared to that number we could give a generic answer and the same thing can be done over here but you can't do the same thing over here if someone asked you what is a small number divided by small number you would say excuse me can you just tell me can you specify what are those two small numbers because depending upon what those two small numbers are our answers can be anything and that's what we mean when we say zero by zero is indeterminate we just mean that you cannot come up with a general answer. It doesn't have any generic answer. It can be anything depending upon what is the specific value over here. That is why people say zero by zero is an indeterminate form. I hope you can now understand why infinity by infinity is also indeterminate. Hopefully I was able to give you some intuition behind this I will see you next time with more physics videos. <laughs> see you soon.